following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. Hey, this is John Hanna, and you're listening to the Sir Walter Jones Show. <laughs> SWJ, if you please. Sir Walter Jones. Who that? Who that? Sir Walter Jones. Oh, yeah. Sir Walter Jones. Come on, come on. Sir Walter Jones. Put them hands up. Sir Walter Jones. Hey, you know that. Sir Walter Jones. Who we listening to? The Sir Walter Jones Show. Yeah, I know that's right. This is the Sir Walter Jones Show with co-host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show that tackles the hot topics in a believer's walk. Get in on the conversation now by calling 773-675-5906. Sir Walter Jones. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sir Walter Jones. Come on, everybody. Sir Walter Jones. Let's do it one time. Sir Walter Jones. Ladies. Sir Walter Jones. Fellas. Sir Walter Jones. We're listening to the Sir Walter Jones Show. Yeah, I know that's right. Wednesday. 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 Donald. A teenager was shot 16 times, his death sparking outrage throughout the community. NBC 5 Susan Carlson is live for us at 26 in California with the latest developments. Susan. Stefan and Marion, the charges of first degree murder were announced just about an hour ago. And with these charges coming out today, this is the first time we are revealing the officer's identity and showing you the Chicago police officer accused of killing Laquan McDonald. This is 37 year old Jason Van Dyke, his mugshot just coming into our newsroom. He arrived here at the criminal courts building earlier this morning. He had no expression on his face and didn't respond to questions from reporters. He turned himself in and is now facing first degree murder charges in the death of 17 year old Laquan McDonald. That teenager was shot 16 times in October of last year. Police were responding to a call about someone breaking into vehicles in a trucking yard when this confrontation occurred. Police have said that Van Dyke opened fire when McDonald lunged at him with a knife and called it self-defense. A coroner's report revealed McDonald had PCP in his system. Any questions about what happened may soon be cleared up. The entire incident was captured on dash cam video, which is expected to go public tomorrow. A judge ordered it to be released against the city's wishes. African-American leaders are calling for peace, anticipating protests in response that they hope don't get out of hand. The timing of the charge is interesting, happening just ahead of the release of this explosive video as the city is calling for calm. Van Dyke right now is inside the courtroom. He is awaiting this hearing at noon today. Of course, I'll have more updates on this fast developing story before the end of our newscast. At the Criminal Courts Building, Susan Carlson, NBC5. Hello, everybody. It's Sir Walter of the Sir Walter Jones Show. I am he. It is Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday. Usually, music business day. But we're not going to talk about music today. We're going to shut off the music uh, until the breaks, that is. Uh, because we want to talk about something that's very, 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 very important to us here on the show. Um, the preacher and the politician. Yeah, we're going there. You know, we usually do these type of shows on Friday. Five Side Friday. Talk about the current events of the week. What what went down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on and on. But uh, because tomorrow is uh, Turkey Day, happy Thanksgiving to those of you who celebrate it. And uh, you'll be celebrating and sitting down with your families at the table. Getting all of the tryptophan that you can inside your your system. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, we won't be on the air tomorrow. We will be, well, not live, we won't. We're probably going to play some rebroadcasts. But tomorrow and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, we'll be taking a break. Uh, so I thought today, let's get a cracking on uh, a Friday topic. As you know, uh, the video was released today of uh, Laquan, who was executed right there in front of pretty much a few people 
And all those cameras that was uh, aiming towards that particular incident, uh, many of them did not record audio and then others didn't record video. You know, it makes you wonder, was there a conspiracy theorist that, that played a part into that? Uh, we finally did get one video out of it and it didn't, it didn't really help us out. Uh, and then, uh, just yesterday they went on ahead and released, uh, they released the video, but that was the day after, uh, the uh, state's attorney charged this police officer with, uh, murder. Mm -hmm. Uh, Van Dyke, officer Van Dyke, who have about 20 complaints on him. He's got quite a few complaints. Now, let me help you out on the complaint situation um, because where he is, where he paroles, a uh, patrol, I said parole, mm -hmm. where he patrols, it is not unusual for an, a white officer to have complaints on him for racial uh, misconduct. It's not unusual at all. So 20 is really not such an unusual number for a white officer and that usually patrols a black area. Okay, you understand what that? So don't get all crazy and start riding in the streets because you're saying they should have had him off of the police force from 20 complaints. That might be an average <laughs> for white officers in the black area, okay? But uh, 20, well, shoot, one is too many, okay? Uh, and I think there's something went on in this man's mind. I think possibly he might be might be a bigot. He might be a racist. He might hate black people. He may. He may, uh, but, uh, or he just had a temporary something going on. He might have something in his system. Uh, he might have had some drugs as well. Uh, he may have had something in his system or he had a mental breakdown at that moment where he could not let go that trigger. He couldn't let it go. He emptied his barrel. Okay. And get and get, and was getting ready to reload until his, his boys told him, stop, hold, cease fire so they can kick the, the knife out of uh, Laquan's hands. Okay. They're going to be fighting about this uh, for a while. And uh, trust me, you turn on Fox News and MSNBC and uh, all the alphabets. You'll see where um, uh, you're going to have uh, the the moderates and the far right, the far left is going to fight over this. Okay. Most people are trying to agree. Usually, most people on this particular case are agreeing. Let me say that because uh, they saw the video. <sighs> Thank God for videos. Uh, let's see camera phones and uh, dash cam videos because without them we would not see the stuff that people and mothers who've been crying for years uh, and uh, those who've been who, who went to jail actually uh, for stuff that they should not have went to jail for and if they went to jail because they should have went to jail they should not have been got gotten the uh, the sentences sentencing that they got uh, because there was no video camera there so after the Michael Brown or somebody how it happened, they began to mandate that the police officers have uh, these dash cam v videos. All right. Unfortunately, you know, things have been manipulated within the police department and it is a shame. Uh, the board that uh, oversees or uh, investigates a private investigating, you know, when you uh, commit something and then you bring in a board to oversee you and you pay that board, <laughs> It's really, it's really a shame. And the police department, not just here in Chicago, but all across America have a, have a, uh, a gag, a protection within the brotherhood and the sisterhood because the sisters on the, on the force. Um, they will, they will complain to you. They will complain to you. Now go up. Can you go check my guests? See if the door is locked. What have you? Because I have a wonderful guest, a uh, pastor, Andre Johnson, and he's here, but I want to make sure he gets in. Um. Uh, oh, he's here. All right, come on in, Doc. Uh, the the police will say uh, that um, uh, you guys are uh, uh, you're not you're quiet. You won't snitch on. We want to find the killer of so and so and so and so. Y'all ain't telling us, okay? But the police, uh, they're hypocrites because they don't tell on their own brethren. When a police shoot down someone. And there is no video camera. Them police ain't turning on each other. Oh, no. In fact, it's dangerous for them to turn their own brothers because the brothers will turn. We had a young man here uh, who was a former police officer, Apostle David Rogers, who talked about him him on the police force about sometimes he says he had they reassigned him because he saw some things that was kind of uh, myst mysterious within uh, the force. And he went to tell uh, his superiors and superior reassigned him. That's just the way it is. 
Uh, it is um, the police uh, department is a, a brotherhood of secrecy. A, <laughs> they are the mafia in a sense. And not all of them are crooked. And there are some wonderful police officers. I know them for a fact. OK, uh, many of them have served us. And when I call them, they were there right on time to help me, whatever I needed done. All right. But then there are so many of them are just no good. And uh, we have to uh, really pray for the force. Uh, Facebook have chimed in, and uh, my goodness, they're, um, uh, I'm glad they did because, you know, these type of topics really can stir up the soul of man. And it could divide the brethren, and that's one thing that I don't want ever to happen. Uh, so go ahead and give that uh, call out here. Michelle uh, Hollins Casey, she's here. And uh, let's see, who else is there? Oh, Pastor Chris Harris is here, Chris Harris Sr., my brother. In the Lord, he and I go back and forth on Facebook. <laughs> some people see some of the stuff we talk about, and they're like, really? Y'all going to get this together? <laughs> I love Chris Harris. Known him for a long Known him longer than he knew himself. Mm -hmm. Yep, I said it, Chris Harris, on the air. If you want to you you go at it, I got the mic. Now, he's a good brother, and the brother does a lot of things in the community, okay? Uh, and uh, that's our fight. No, it's so none of y'all business is our fight. We do what we do. And when I go into these people's churches and their pulpits, I don't talk like I do on my show. Nope. I, when I go into the pulpit, I preach about the, the the cross, about Christ. I preach about the gospel, and I don't bring all that politics in the, in the church or in the, in the pulpit. So I do preach for a lot of pastors, and they they know that I don't I don't mix my worlds together. Uh, and so, uh, I enjoy Chris Harris's, uh, his, his preaching is, is really, uh, I take notes, believe it or not. I, sh I shouldn't have said that. Now you got the big head. He can't even leave. He can't, <laughs> the world ain't big enough to hold his head now. Love you, Chris Harris. And he also, uh, tagged, uh, Corey Brooks. Uh, if, if Corey Brooks is not that busy, hopefully he'll be listening in. Terry B Bailey, uh, is on the post here and we're going to go ahead and, uh, we're going to read you guys in the right before the show is out. We're going to read your comments. The great Michael Drayton senior, who is uh, one of the writers for the movie Chirac. He was on the show. Uh, well, some of the writing for the music and, uh, he's chiming in as well. Uh, the great Paul Rogers, my cousin is here. Uh, and Lisa Ivy, uh, who is a member of, uh, Bishop uh, Robert Sanders. All right. They're all here. They chimed in. Others were chiming as well. Okay. I have the great uh, uh, pastor and overseer, uh, Andre Johnson. And Andre Johnson, uh, he's the pastor of Grace and Mercy. And he is, uh, he's also, he was elected vice chairman of the Pastors and Elders Council of the ju Third Jurisdiction. And uh, Third Jurisdiction, the bishop is, again, I mentioned uh, uh, Pastor Sanders, uh, uh, Bishop Sanders, Robert R. Sanders. Oh, my God. You know, this man has um, definitely been an impact on my life, the Jones family's life. And everybody who knows, who in the Church of God in Christ know this man, especially if you live in the South Chicago area and in Joliet. He have two churches. Uh, he is... Um, Pastor uh, Johnson is also the captain of the NSTF, and he's the chairman of the Constitutional Committee of uh, GCPE uh, and uh, chief clerk, and overseer of the National Ju Judiciary Board, the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. Uh, so uh, he ain't somebody who just popped up on the scene just yesterday and had a beef with, with y'all. No, he's been around for a long time. Come out of first jurisdiction, I believe it is, right? We with, all did. Uh, mm -hmm, yeah, we all of us did. Uh, there was no third jurisdiction. We was all first. And then, well, they, they went. Uh, the Lord allowed us to uh, represent the Church of God in Christ in different areas. Okay, so y'all can cry over splits all you want to, but you never know what the design of God is. Uh, he's on the show, and I want to thank him. Man, pull that mic down and talk to me, man. How you doing? Praise the Lord. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing great, doing great. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you came on the show. And I'm going to read what you put on the, on the Facebook so that people can understand why we're doing the show today. Uh, you said, um, why does Chicago media keep going to Pastor Corey Brooks about how blacks feel about this cop shooting? Uh, you continue, says, uh, you don't represent, he don't represent 99% of the black men or women, people in, uh, uh, women. People in Chicago, you were typing fast. You did say that on Facebook. Mm -hmm. He's a black, <laughs> you call him the <laughs> black cracker. <laughs> I said it. I read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who told more black folks to vote for this governor? While most of the other had no clue uh, what's going on. And, and now their gas and lights, daycare and all that stuff are off. And uh, the real pastors are helping uh, the hungry and the needy. White media. 
He's not our pastor. Stop. What's his history for selling us out? The billionaire governor two months after being sworn in, the governor gave him a $2 million grant from a private foundation. And now, uh, folks, you have to vote and read for yourself. And by the way, if this message offends, push the delete button. <laughs> says I have over 200 waiting. Yeah, that was Pastor Andre Johnson. And I brought this up because on my show, we we talk about everything, and it's not like it was a big secret. Everybody knew what went on, and I have some files, and we're going to talk about the backstory, and we're going to see if Pastor Andre Johnson uh, is true, is right, and he can back up what he's getting ready to say on this air. Mm-hmm. You ready for this fight, man? Uh, well, you know, you, you I ready? have gray hair, so that's fine. <laughs> you see the guy gray hair. Okay, all right. Well, let's let's go. Hey, um, engineer, I think we better let's see. We better do the backstory before we chime in. We got two hours, so we go ahead and take and let our head down. Uh, I'm going to file A. Okay, uh, I think I want to go to A. Now, this is Bruce Rauner. All right, let, let, let's let's not go to the, the file just yet. I got to make sure the people who live in L.A. and and New York and places like that know who these people who we're talking about so that you can get the backstory a pastor cory brooks i met him i played uh in fact i recorded in his recording studio at his church all right believe it or not he's a good man he he's, a good, he's man. a good man he's a good pastor and a community man when things happen this man is right there on it um i'm reading his from his uh, bio here he's a businessman philanthropist songwriter mentor and spiritual coach coach and pastor brooks uh senior uh, answered his call to the ministry at the age of 19 and received his first partnership. I'm uh, sorry, past, pastorship at the age of 23 at Mount Moriah Church in Richmond, um, Indiana. At 27, he went on to pastor West Point Church in Chicago, Illinois, demonstrating an electrifying style of preaching and teaching and gave birth to a revolutionary four years later. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, it goes on and on. And then we know that he is now the pastor and founder of uh, New Beginnings. OK, now that's the backstory on him. Uh, and then what happened was he decided to go on the rooftop of a hotel across the street from his church over there in King Drive uh, because he was protesting and he wanted that place shut down, uh, torn down so that he can build a center for the community. OK, we remember that story. It went nationwide. OK. And then what happened was, he, well, he was trying to raise a little half, uh, probably about a half million uh, dollars to do this. Uh, and then Tyler Perry kicked in. OK. And an uh, article from Chicago, uh, let's see, CBS Chicago says here, this is an article from uh, February 24, 2012, because this is when it all ended. Uh, Reverend uh, Brooks came from the roof uh, of a shuttered West Whitlawn neighborhood. Motel after actor director Tyler Perry said he would donate a hundred thousand dollars so Brooks can buy the motel and replace it with a community center. After he learned about the pastor's three month vigil, Perry said on the Tom Jonas show uh, Friday morning, he would provide the donation. Now Brooks is fifteen thousand dollars above his original goal of raising four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay. In uh, in addition, a local donor said he would provide eighty five thousand dollars to Brooks' mission. Okay, and this goes on. All right, so he got off the rooftop. Y'all with me? All right, because uh, Pastor, not Pastor, uh, Tyler Perry kicked in. Okay. In walked Bruce Rounder, who was running for the governor of Illinois. All right, Bruce Rounder, born in Feb February 18, 1957. An American businessman, he's also a philanthropist and pol politician. He is uh, the 42nd and current governor of uh, serving here uh, in, Il in Illinois. Prior to his election, he was the chairman of the uh, R8 Capital Partners and chairman of the private e equity firm GTCR. Based in Chicago, he was the Republican nominee in 2014 Illinois' gubernatorial election and defeated Democratic incumbent Governor Pat Quinn. Okay, well, uh, while Brooks was trying to help us see how great Governor Rounder was, someone broke into the New Beginnings Church after they raised money. OK, and I think they stole about eight thousand dollars. OK, and let's go to file a Brittany and let's see what happened, because Governor Rauner was there and, and Brooks was there and they, they, they get it, gave a, a news conference. And now vandalism and robbery to occur as, because someone spoke from his heart and, and made it public how he's voting in a particular election. 
this is outrageous, and we've got to condemn it. We've got to rise above it. Mr. Rauner, who do you think is responsible for this vandalism? I, I have no idea. I hope that law enforcement officials will conduct a thorough, prompt investigation and those responsible. Do you think it could justice. be traced to the Quinn campaign? I have no idea. I have no idea. Pastor, a similar question. Uh, do you believe that the vandalism is due to the stance that you've taken in this political campaign? And if so, do you think Quinn supporters are behind it? Uh, I don't know about the vandalism, but I, I can say it's, uh, it just seems really coincidental that it comes after the day when I get death threats, and those death threats included Bruce Rauner's name. So I'm not going to go as far as saying that the Democrats did this or they sent someone to do this. I don't know who did it. But what I do hope is that um, the Chicago police will do everything that they can to find out who made the calls and who broke into our church. Pastor, Pastor are you a registered they... Republican? Pastor, are you a registered Republican? No, I'm not. Why not? Uh, I'm just not. I'm, but I am going to be a registered independent, though. Okay. Uh, I'm no longer going to be just one party person. I'm going to go with the person that I believe is best for the job. So Amen. whether that's a Democrat that's or a right. Republican, it just so happens in this governor's race, I believe that 100 um, percent that Bruce Rauner is, is best uh, to run the state of Illinois. Do you think most of the members of your congregation will vote for Mr. Rauner? Uh, I don't know, but I hope so. Uh, I hope not just uh, our church, but I hope most of our community uh, will change their minds and change their views. I think it's time that we stop. Uh, we're the only race of people that I know uh, that are beholding to uh, one party. We claim that party, but they don't claim us. As you can see from our neighborhoods, our education, our school systems are failing, our unemployment is high. Violence is everywhere. It's rampant. And so long, for so long, we've been loyal to a party, uh, but that party has not reciprocated uh, what we've done for them. So in doing this, I'm hoping and praying uh, that we'll change the tide of, of Illinois and we'll change the tide of America and let people know that we're no longer going to be a people who just submit and surrender uh, to one party. To what extent do you think undecideds are swayed by newspaper endorsements? Uh, I really don't know. I don't know. It's an honor to have received now more than a dozen of the prominent newspaper endorsements around the state. I'm honored by that. Uh, I believe that that's an indication that folks understand my policies will bring back Illinois real economic growth as a business builder my whole life, real education improvement as an education reformer for much of my career, real uh, efficiency and effectiveness in government so we can get value for our taxpayers. And I'm someone who can stand up, be financially independent, stand up against the special interests that are entrenched in Springfield, shake up the culture, uh, and bring about, rip out that corruption and patronage and cronyism that's rampant with Ted Quinn and Rod Lagojevich and Madigan and the whole crowd. I can change the system. I'm outside of it. I'm independent from it. And I can't be bought, bribed, or intimidated. People see it. We're going to make a big difference. Did you talk to Mr. Farrow about the Sun-Times endorsement? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's a... There were no conversations about him changing policy. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. That's Governor Rauner and uh, uh, the great uh, pastor, Coy Brooks, together uh, defending their stand. Now, uh, before I uh, let this man loose here, uh, th let's talk about the current situation with Bruce Rauner and why he's here today, uh, Pastor Johnson. Uh, in Bruce Rauner, in his first executive order, he halted state hirings as well as, a des uh, let's see, discretionary, discretionary spending and called for state agencies to sell surplus property. In February of this year, Ron assigned, assigned an executive order blocking so-called fair share union fees from state employee paychecks. The same day, Ron hired a legal team headed by former attorney uh, Dan Webb and his law firm, Winston and Strawn, to file a declaratory judgment action to the U.S. Supreme Court to affirm his action. And then in February... Uh, he proposed a $4.1 billion in budget cuts affecting higher education, Medicaid, state employees, uh, uh, pensions, public transit, local government support. And in April, around also suspended funding for program addressing domestic violence, homeless youths, autism, and immigrant integration. Critics call these moves morally reprehensible and harmful to the state ec uh, economy. But in May, okay, Governor Ron announced the shelving of the uh, Ileani Tollway Project. That's probably the best thing he did, by the way. Uh, a controversial proposal tollway between I-55 uh, in Illinois and I-65 in Indiana, citing the lack of sufficient capital resources and the budget 
impasse, but did not completely remove it from the state's list of proposed in- infrastructural projects. Uh, and lastly, uh, Ron uh, vetoed the Illinois state budget on June 25, 2015. He stated that he would not sign a budget until the Democratic state legislator passes his turnaround agents, uh, his turnaround agenda to reduce trade union power and freeze property taxes with no state budget. Social service agencies have cut back on services. State universities have laid off staff. Public transit services have ceased in Monroe and, and Randolph counties, uh, counties that is, and uh, child care assistant uh, eligibility has been cut by 90%. Ain't nobody getting paid. And people are hungry, and these people can't pay their bills. Uh, Johnson? Yes, sir. Doc, we're going to talk about three minutes, go to break, and come back and let you go crazy. What's going on here, man? Well, first of all, you know. Come closer to that that mic there. Thank you. Yeah, you got an arm there. You can bring it on in because they need to hear you. Yes, sir. First mm-hmm. of all, I just want to thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. Uh, your, your father and I are great friends. Your your family is a truly uh, high statue in the church. Mm-hmm. And uh, anybody knows the Jones family and has ever heard them preach or play music knows that they are the people to reckon with because <laughs> they set the standard. Wow. And uh, as I told your father last night, I thank God for you and what you do. Thanks, sir. Uh, this condition that we're in is not, uh, uh, it's kind of self-inflicted. Sure. If you see the bridge is crumbling and you decide to cross it, and then when you cross it and it falls apart, you you scream, murder, why is it falling apart? Mm-hmm. Well, who told you to cross that bridge? <laughs> so I don't know what you want me to say, but if you ask me a question, <laughs> I'll give you an answer. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Then let's back it up. Coy Brooks, Okay. Have you met him, by the way? No, sir. And let me let me do this. Uh, yeah, I'm a pastor. Uh, the Bible says, uh, "Touch not my anointing, and do my prophet no harm." I mean no personal animosity towards the person, the mm-hmm. pastor, his ministry. Never met him. Pardon me, I have met him, but it was in a group setting, so I have nothing personal against him. Uh, nevertheless, when I scream at the top of the mountaintop that uh, I'm going to start wearing blue and pink on the first of September. Blue and pink? Blue and pink. Okay. And if I'm going to wear blue and pink on the 1st of September, and then the sun shines on the 2nd of September, mm-hmm. and we all get cancer because I'm wearing blue and pink, mm-hmm. because I shouted at the top of the mountain blue gotcha. and pink, gotcha. then I needed to know what that blue and pink really mm-hmm. represented. Mm-hmm. My heart is pure. My mind is right. I love God. I'm depending on Jesus. Mm-hmm. But that blue and pink that is blue- king, killing my people. Killing my people. Killing my people. <sighs> wow. I was C. Carter. just walked in, and my co-host uh, I'm so glad you're here, man. I'm glad to be here. Uh, because this this one of your days. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's one of your days. Blue and pink. I'm going to take that right into a commercial break, okay? Uh, because uh, we need to find out what's going on. Because he said it out of his own mouth, Johnson. Uh, when I said uh, that Corey was a good good man, he agreed. He oh, said absolutely. amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And every good man have something that they may do that uh, their decision might not be uh, not as popular. Okay, oh, they with the people, been hoodwinked. oh, they could Deceived. have been hooked. Right, that's true, and that that does happen. And they don't. They made. He didn't know the future. No, he didn't know what, was, but, what the man was going to do. But mm-hmm. as a man of God, mm-hmm. he gives us something mm-hmm. to prevent us from making these mistakes. It's mm-hmm. called a prayer life. It's called discernment. Sure, it's called being led by yeah. God. Yeah, and he, he didn't and, tap into that part. Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> okay, no, uh, and I can say that I can stand on that because sometimes he'll lead us mm-hmm. through Samaria. True. Sometimes for a great good answer. Good. I love that. Good answer. Uh, it's four thirty p.m. in Chicago in area, y'all. And I want to hear some Alvin Willis. Haven't heard from him in a while. Oh wow! A good brother, man. Yeah, uh, my namesake. Yeah, your your namesake. What mm-hmm. say? What say? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Alvin Willis in the Praise Alive Choir uh, song. Well, he kind of brought from the dead. Every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Uh, he took a, he took it there in nineteen ninety nine. From the let it, the rainfall project, y'all uh, let us uh, just sip some coffee and water and uh, talk. Uh, we'll be back. I promise you. So, on the Jones show. Oh no! Did you miss part of today's show? Well, just head to Spreaker dot com. That is Spreaker. S P R E. A-K-E-R dot com and type in the Sir Walter Jones show to get today's episode and past ones. So do it now.
Alvin Willis praise the live choir every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Uh, it was once uh, I think the original was uh, the Blue gospel Mr. Chester. music was it was Blue Bloomington Chester, Chester? Mass choir. Oh, I thought it was gospel music workshop. Mm-hmm. Remember, okay, Bloomington Chester. Mass Bloomington choir. Chester. Yes, okay, yes, yeah, yes. It, it was done. You guys are older times. than me. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah, but you got me by year. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to catch you guys up, if you just tuned in, we were talking about uh, the backstory of Bruce uh, Rauner and uh, Pastor Corey Brooks. They came together. Uh, the rooftop preacher, uh, and then in walks uh, James Meeks, pastor, a uh, Reverend James Meeks of uh, the um, what's the church name? Salem. Salem Baptist, Baptist Church. Yeah, Salem Baptist uh-huh. House of Hope. Hey, House of Hope. Yeah, uh huh. Right here on the South Side. Mm-hmm. Uh, got a file here. This is Fox News. Okay, now this is where uh, again, uh, so overseer Johnson here that's on the stu- in the studio right now. Um, he did. Uh, I call it an op-ed because you know Facebook. We were the the, the newspaper is not going to listen to him that much because he doesn't. He doesn't have uh, that uh, influence. Jeanette's Jeanette, Jeanette quality. Quality. That's the word. Yeah. yeah, he have not had that yet. So, oh, sure, he, he has it. Uh, he has it. Uh, they they haven't recognized it yet. They haven't recognized it. Well, they haven't seen it, its yeah. value or its yeah. usefulness yet. There you go. There you go. So uh, you'll get off the shelf soon. Yeah, you. <laughs> you leave the checks in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, Abe, uh, Brittany, uh, file B. This is Fox News interviewing James Meeks as he support Bruce Rauner. An African-American minister is breaking ties with Democrats over what he says is their inability to make a positive difference for his people. Correspondent Mike Tobin has the most unusual story from Chicago tonight. A former state senator and leader of the black community in Chicago's fiercely Democratic South Side, Reverend James Meeks presides over a megachurch with a congregation 15,000 strong. In the gubernatorial election, he is throwing his support, not behind the incumbent Democrat, Governor Pat Quinn. Instead, he is supporting the challenger, Bruce Rauner, a wealthy Republican. Every African American knows that the Democratic Party just expects our vote. He referenced poverty, blight, and the violence that plagues poor neighborhoods in Chicago. Our schools are still broken and getting worse. We're still the last in employment or business. Our neighborhoods are deplorable and we still get the same promises from the Democratic Party, but we don't get any deliverable. Analysts say few Republicans have won statewide in Illinois without carrying 20% of Chicago. 
To do that, a campaign needs a significant portion of the black vote. Are you with me here? And Meeks can deliver. It does make me think twice. Maybe he knows a little bit more than I do. Well, I would stick behind the church 100% of Reverend Meeks. He understands what it means to, to turn the vote out here in the city. He's well respected. He can speak to the business community. Meeks says what he will not do is preach politics at the pulpit. He has, however, provided Rauner with a venue to speak and is working to get him in front of more African-American congregations. I would hope that uh, I would get a chance to influence a lot of African-Americans to look at how we as a voting bloc is being taken for granted. Meeks says this is not to be interpreted as an anti-Obama vote. He is pro-Rauner, supporting the candidate he believes can bring jobs and recovery, particularly to the struggling neighborhoods in Chicago. Brett, back to you. Mike Tobin in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you a question, Johnson. Yes, sir. What do you think about Meeks? <clears throat> God bless him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Perfect illustration of it. If you can't say something nice. I love it. This man, <laughs> don't say something at all. This don't man, say something I'm all. telling you, they don't recognize this as greatness. <laughs> oh, yes. I wish yeah. I had your coof. <laughs> coof. Absolutely. Uh, I met him um, a few times. I, I played in the gymnasium of his church, the old church on uh, on Indiana in um, 118th, I think it is, the old one. <clears throat> uh, Meeks is a politician, Okay. We have to decide, though, which is first in a lot of these guys' lives, politician or preacher, which one's first. Uh, then let me ask you about uh, Jesse Jackson, okay? Now, Jesse Jackson's been around for a long time. Yes, sir. Um, but when you see him, do you see a preacher or a politician? I see an activist. An activist, okay. Tell me the difference. I'll tell you the difference. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I am somebody. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Stupid. I'm going to need a vest walking out the studio. <laughs> I see, uh, you know, listen, let me say something personal about Reverend Jesse Jackson. My mother's been deceased since uh, the early 80s. And, oh, wow. And I remember uh, seeing him on TV and watching <coughs> Muhammad Ali fights. <coughs> he was always the gentleman that had the huge sideburns. Sure, that's right. And I remember wanting to be cool to have some huge sideburns because <laughs> Bishop Ford didn't have any huge no. sideburns. Oh, no, no. But, but Jesse Jackson had mm -hmm. huge sideburns. Right. So, you know, you have Jesse Jackson who has done something that some presidents haven't done, and that's free hostages. And, you sure did. You know, so I, I, I don't want to condemn him for, you know, let me delete that word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I see him as, a, as an activist for people, mm -hmm. and I see him not – "Quote unquote," using the church as a crutch to get your attention because he's never gone to a mega church uh, per se on a permanent basis and says, "This is who I am on a permanent basis." Meaning every day mm -hmm. he stays in his castle mm -hmm. and he preaches or he directs his information. Sure. And you you cannot redefine push mm -hmm. because he defined push for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for that, I call him an activist, and for that reason. I think he's a great activist because he has not lied. Okay. Meaning he has not said that gotcha. I'm, he's not the uh, the bishop, the apostle, the gotcha. the kingmaker. He's the activist, so he has stayed in his active. Sure. He found his role, his purpose. Yeah. And stayed in his lane. Happened to be a minister. And just mm -hmm. happened to be a minister. That's good. Actually, he was assistant pastor to fellowship. That's oh, right. Church. Wow. Yes, I sir. Know that. So okay. that was a perfect partnership of the church and acti uh, an outreach. Mm -hmm. Clay Evans was spiritual, and he was natural. Yeah. Right, and, and, and he was the the go-to cleanup man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he mm -hmm. knew how to negotiate and get things mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. He's not appreciated as he should be. He mm -hmm. often, uh, he's been villainized by the posterity, our posterity, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. so many people didn't care for him. Right. Um, and I think he has so much worth and so much value that we have no clue about, because mm -hmm. many times we had no voice, mm -hmm. none at all. That's true. And he spoke up. <clears throat> When, when it wasn't popular, who, who, yeah. who spoke to Chrysler and who spoke to, right. you know, yes, what what black man in America can 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 it ain't the guy who closes his eyes and talks and says he wants to be president. Sure, mm. I would not want him to be my no, no, surgeon. No, no, would you want no, him? No, that man closes his eyes more than yeah, I have gray hair. Yeah, he <laughs> he, no. he prays when he closes his eyes and he talks. 
Mm. <laughs> I never paid that atten- paid yeah. much attention to what his eyes yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, that's interesting. I'm going to have to pay <laughs> closer attention to that. He does. Close his eyes. Because I actually am impressed with that man. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like him. I think personally. that happened, though, the older he got. He's beginning to be close his eyes. And you can see you can see age just hitting him. Yeah. Um, and then, you know what? Um, his profession mm-hmm. probably has, he has fatigue in his eyes. Because mm-hmm. I have oh, my yeah. doctor. He often closes his eyes, so he often looks it looks down when he speaks because looking at files, mm-hmm. that's a thought process. That is so true. The yeah. the new guy who's running for pre, um, um, uh, president, or oh, the the Republican, the black mm-hmm. guy. Yeah, yeah that's ben what Carson. we're talking about. Yeah, ben Carson. yeah he closes his eyes. Uh, but Jackson, I'm, when I said that, I meant Jackson. Jesse Jackson closes his eyes now. Oh, I don't, you know, he's a yeah. father figure. I don't pay attention to him. He look, yeah, he don't look at the camera. He looks down. If you're not closing his eyes, he's looking down like he's just saw a deer in headlights. Well, because he's thinking. He's thought, yeah. Yeah. We look away when we think. We look mm-hmm, down when we mm-hmm, think. Mm-hmm, yeah, it's mm-hmm. a focus uh, mm-hmm. mechanism, I think. And I, and I think I think the man, um, and I, I love the analogy that you brought up uh, about understanding, uh, recognizing uh, his greatness. I think after a while, the greatness people get, they they uh, like a kid with a, who begged mom for that new toy all year. And then mm-hmm. the toy finally fi- shows up, and the the boy t- plays with the toy for about a couple hours, mm-hmm. and he's pretty much done with it. I think we played with Jesse for for a few decades, and we would I think we'd like okay, well, I'm done the, with you. The, the playing field got crowded. Yeah, the that, playing that's field good got crowded too. Because mm-hmm. then you had the uh, ascension of a sharp, then you had the ascension mm-hmm. of other people who mm-hmm. I could do that too. Yeah, you know, in yeah. which the help is needed. Sure. Um, so, so let me ask the the question: mm-hmm. is, since you bring up Reverend Al Sharpton. Who who's more of an issue, Reverend Al Sharpton or uh, Doctor Brooks? Right. I know they're on two different scales. One's national, one's local. But Absolutely. Well, ooh. Brooks is trying to get national. You remember, he's the man who walked across America. Yeah, he ain't lost a pound. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> nope, nope. I didn't say it, uh, Doc Brooks. That was uh, obviously coming. Uh, Social Security number three three five sixty five seventy two. <laughs> <laughs> and you add a couple of the more numbers in there, and you get it. Just fill it up. <laughs> but I think Pastor Corey Brooks wants to be recognized as Pastor Corey Brooks. Uh, I, and I think, but I will say, though, because I like your watch, by the way. You get take a picture of that watch. That's a nice chance. watch. We get a chance to take a picture of that man's watch, because that, that bad. that's a bad thing right there. Mm-hmm. And, okay, uh, as I was rudely interrupted by that watch. Yeah. Uh, you see, see how the Bible says uh, Lexus rule. You told you, you know, when a man stumbles, <laughs> you, you, <was> right. <laughs> you call the man stumble. <laughs> you said watch and pray. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, he cl- he cleaned twenty four hours a day. The board of health is jealous of this man right here. No, sir. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm saved by grace. If it for him, I would not be right on ball time. Mm. <laughs> on ball time. So you balled at watch? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. But uh, the pink and the blue. <laughs> yes, okay. sir. Yes, pink and the blue. Good refocus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's yes, good. Yeah. Um, in contrast to your question, <laughs> comparing the two, I see them one is the same. Only the only one has just been in in it longer. Um, you look at some of the efforts that Brooks has made to do something in his community. It's, it's, it's worthy of applause, so to speak. I have yet to really see anything. I've heard about the staying on top of the roof of the hotel. Yeah, well. And, uh, yeah, this and that. But where's the real where, – where's the outcome? Tyler Perry even – Offer to uh, well, contribute to it, which is national. Now, what has he done in comparison to? P- p- but is to that his fault? Is my question to you guys? Well, is that his? Because people could 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 uh, throw themselves to you, and then everybody else looking at this man throwing themselves to this man, and then then you blame the man. So look what you did to these people. Well, he well. Let, let me let me let me let me check. Get on this expressway. So you know, uh, I've been blessed. I've, I've got a decent education. Years ago, a law degree. Uh, years oh. ago, a master's degree. So I understand economics. Right now, if we're going to deal with this governor, <clears throat> and we're going to deal with a person who's going to represent at the top of the hill about that blue and pink or that pink and blue, it don't matter. And the next day, we get burnt. You know, somebody says in your household, and you're blacking in ice box. They say put on uh, 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 sunscreen, right? And you say, why do I need sunscreen? Well, My melanin protects I, me. <laughs> you know, and black people burn and white people burn too. Mm-hmm. And when he got on top of that hill, everybody got burned. Mm. Now, to understand how money flows, money, you know, governors and states don't make money. We, we have to have some kind of budget. Right. And if you want to go back to 1920, I can. If you want to go to 1950, I can. If you want to go to 1972, I can with the gas crisis. If you want to go to 82, 85, if you want to go to 91, 92, and to the Clinton years, I can. 
For example, you know, we have a shortage of great police officers. I love the police because there's still a majority great police. There's 10%, 15% bad in anything you do. And we'll get to that. But, you know, in the 90s, you remember Bill Clinton put out a big grant, and he was hiring cops around America like, man, 100,000 cops. Remember that program? Sure. So when you influx and you start to grow government in municipalities around the country and you don't keep feeding that baby, then that nutrition, retirement, death, sickness, or whatever the case may be, you can't keep up that, that great mandate of all these police officers because we, the communities became safe or kind of safe or safer, then you don't feed that, 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 that program. So now we get to 2013, 14, when this governor comes in, into play and he's a billionaire and I'm not mad at him being a billionaire, but I remember he had a story. Uh, Crane had a story about it once. He says, my father gave me a loan when I was 18 years old for a million dollars. Right. I remember. I, I, I may have had a loan of $50 at 18, but right. my, my point is, so when you don't understand how to generate money for public use, not for private use, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. equity firms and this, that, mm-hmm, and the other, for mm-hmm. public use, Government, we're all preachers. Mm-hmm. Government was never meant to balance. Right. It was never meant to be a surplus. Mm-hmm. It was meant to help, mm-hmm. to 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 give, and to make steady. You know, make peace, structure, right. structure, order, order, protect, yes. protect. But we're, it was never meant to be a surplus item. You know, uh, for the town or the state or the city that has a surplus, God bless them. But just wait till tomorrow's coming. So, you know, you have this governor who thinks that you're going to balance the budget by cutting programs to the point where daycares, not just in Calumet City, not just in Elmhurst, not just in Hillside, but in in Ina, Illinois, which stands for something. Mm Their doors are closed, too. I know. Stands for something. I know. You know, they told you about slowing down when you got to that bridge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I haven't yeah. forgot. Mm. So the point is, you, so he doesn't, it's kind of like putting a billionaire king in charge of welfare. Mm. Welfare. Welfare, yeah. And, and you, you say it quick, it sounds cheap, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. you know, you may have an image in your mind, but the welfare of mankind. Does is is the welfare of mankind based on cuts? No. Mm. Mm. And, and 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 so I don't know anything in or excuse me, everything and anybody who knows me knows I'm a terrible speller with a lot of education. When I get to a point where me I too. get to a nine letter word, I'm calling and texting and me too. copy and pacing. Just give me three letters and I'm i I'm stumped. So but 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 where but I can't spell stumped. So you talked about <laughs> Meeks, you talked about IT. Jackson, you talked about a few pastors, but where are we as pastors? Unless it is your profession. Right. Now, our profession is supposed to be the ministry. Right. But unless it's your prior profession, unless mm-hmm. you have concrete to understand if you take a billionaire who does not need a paycheck right. to do his job. Then you have to look at the purpose. So where's your right. heart at then? You want to talk about purpose. Mm-hmm. So my heart is I want this to be a right to, right to work state. What does right to work mean? Go to Texas. Go to Alabama. Go to Tennessee, go to uh, Georgia, go to New Mexico. If I want to fire you after laboring on this plant for 20 years, you got nothing to say. If there's sexual harassment, you got nothing to say. If there's the disability, there's nothing to say. You know, there's just nothing to say. Right, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you have to. It doesn't work. Yeah. You, you, you have to remember, you know, the welfare system. You know, in the, yeah. I was watching, what's the movie from the 70s where the girl, the woman has a whole lot of babies? Claudine. Claudine. Yeah, we were talking about that last week. See, yeah. now look at that. Now, yes. you know. We did a whole show. <laughs> yes. You know, and, and listen, my first girlfriend was a white woman, so I got yeah. white friends. You so I got, mm. I, I'm, I'm not that guy. But nevertheless, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, uh, you, you had the image of a black film, a white woman coming around to see if you had a new uh, uh, iron, a new... Uh, Itemizing your and, success and you how know, well you and where did it come from and can we deduct it? Yes. And, and, and your existence, I should say, not success, your existence. Yes. So, so it comes down to the point that what value do you bring besides cutting the budget? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the value he brought was to his community and his demographic because everybody that will benefit from his agenda in effort to say I'm balancing the state budget is really to say. Uh, I'm taking these programs and I'm shifting it. The money's going to still come in and go somewhere. It's just not going to go where it's been going. 
that's called currency, right? Money moves. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, money uh, moves. Money moves. Well, listen, and, and uh, if you want to go to the money game, we can go to Lehman Brothers who were making up phony paper. And, uh, and it's not just Lehman Brothers. It's a whole bunch of other institutions alive today. Uh, I lost big money, mm. enough to buy a block or two. Wow. Big money. So I, I can appreciate your success. You can teach me how to be successful and how to keep my money. But when it comes to government, it, it was never meant to be a nickel and dime organization to, to the penny. How am I to walk past a person of any race who is hungry, who needs food, who needs education, the basic things, and say, no, nah, that's it's costing too much. So you're saying government should not be treated like a business? It, it should not be treated like a for-profit business. Okay. Okay. It's, it's a business of helping people. Okay, it's a service community. It's a service. And that's what's happening with government, I see. That's what's happening with, uh, especially with education, as I am in that field. And they're coming up with all these initiatives and these, as I call them, SOPs. As that's if, it. <clears throat> as if every child or student is the same. Right. And in business, when the product doesn't turn out right, you can have certain areas you look at. We, you can look at the raw materials and change the supplier. Teachers can't do that. No. And each yeah. each entity of the supply is totally different. So with government, it's the same way. You have different cultures and different people that are involved that you're servicing. And you can't look at them all the same way. It's unfair. It's wrong. And it's in other words, they see money and they want to see how they can make the money work for them so they can make the money. So, and, and, In my opinion. I could be wrong. You know, I'm not that smart. Yes, sir. No, no, you're not. Gentlemen, I, I want to get back to this, uh, this, this, this thing I did here. Uh, as I said... I'm not a racist. Somebody in my household may have a different story, but if it is, it's about all races, not just one, because you can have a mentality of any word and any body person. Amen? Yes. So, you know, I'm not that person. But, you know, I, I got sick and tired as I was watching TV the other evening, and every time they were talking about the cop shooting or every time they were talking about economics, they were going to not a pastor who's not known, who's not doing ministry. This is not about the ministry or what he does. This was about when did he become my spokesman about how I feel as a black man. Mm. And, and, and as a black man, regardless of my profession, I didn't elect you. Just like you didn't elect me to stand on the corner and say, you know what, all these black folks, they with me. Mm. I, you're not that person. Now, you know, we mentioned uh, Jesse Jackson, Reverend Jackson. He built his platform. He never put a gun to your head, and you came there if you wanted to. Yes. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And, 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 but when you have media, uh, uh, KRS one had a thing the other day that I read it. I don't know if you saw it. He was talking about words and what words mean and how they infiltrate your mind and deal with the ministry of thinking. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but he was speaking about when you have a person who tells you who you are and then, you, and then they broadcast it, subliminal messages everywhere. Then you get to think, act and we, and, and respond like who I said you are. Yeah. So the last thing I need you to do is tell me who to tell me who I am. Yeah. We have enough problems with raising young men in Chicago than to have a guy who's going to go out of, outside his lane, so to speak, to talk about economics and ministry, uh, uh, police killings. Uh, no, we, we got some accountability that needs to be had, but we all have to stay in our lanes. If you're a teacher, I'm going to listen to you. If you're a doctor, I'm going a, I'm to a look and see what you have to say. That makes sense. Uh, if it's the pulpit, <laughs> you know, I'll raise my hand. You know, so you can't be all things to all people. Is that what the Bible yeah, said? Yeah, yeah, Well, you, you, you well, Apostle Paul says uh, uh, he was going to try to be all things, all people, that he might win some. some. <laughs> right. And what happened? Yeah. Well, <laughs> he won a couple. But, he uh, won some, and he yeah, lost some. Yeah. <laughs> he almost won King Agrippa. He said, I was almost. <laughs> yes, I was almost. <laughs> if my phone ring, I'm going to uh, uh, plug it into the mic because our phones for today of all days, our phone is, uh, system is down here at the station. Uh, that is Daniel, but the devil right there. Uh, so Chris Harris was, is trying to call, uh, and he's going to call my cell phone, and uh, I know how to put the cell phone over the mic, and Corey Brooks wants to call in as well. Uh, again, my my shows uh, we are a um, equal opportunity. Uh, you know, you we know. fight anybody. Yeah, we we fight and agree <laughs> with everybody. Uh, and you know, we we ain't scared of nobody because we 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 on the air every day from four to five, four to six. That is your cousin sent me a yeah. text. 
Oh, why is the black passive? Wait, why is it that black folk need need a leader? Who is the leader of white folk? There is none. Oh, I was about to make that That's statement. We're the only community with a leader, and why do we have? Why one? do we have to have one? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're the only community that was forced here, mm-hmm. and the only community that has suffered mm-hmm. what we've suffered. Unlike any other demographic in any ethnic group, no mm-hmm. one else in this country can say that they came and have been changed in perspective from seeing being seen as property. Mm-hmm. And having to fight to be seen as people. So they have to have an advocate of some kind yeah. to even to want to help transform the mind of the people that they represent or that they're part of, as well as to change the perspective and the mindset of the people that the outside people look in, look sure. in at us. Yeah. Unfortunately, media takes and feeds both everybody else and us as how we should behave and how we should look. Sure. And there's always a fight. Yeah, there's always a fight. So we need somebody to lead the way to be the example. I think we should be in charge of the border. Ah. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's a good place. That's a good point. That's, that's a good point. Let's talk about that point after this break. And uh, maybe my phone will ring. And if the phone ring, we'll cut the song short. Uh, this <coughs> is, uh, that's when you bless me. L.A. Mass Choir. I don't know if y'all remember that one, but it's going to be a familiar when you hear it. From a Can't Hold Back album, 1989. All right. Uh, play just a little bit of it, and we'll come right back. Uh, hopefully, we'll hear from the great Pastor Chris Harris. So, on the Jones Show. Percy Beatty, and you're listening to the Sir Walter Jones Show. Keep it there. Oh, no. Did you miss part of today's show? Well, just head to Spreaker.com. That is Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com, and type in the Sir Walter Jones Show to get today's episode and past ones. So do it now. I felt so alone, see no one cared, you came along, gave me a song, to ease the pain, and erase the strain.
show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. Wednesday. 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 So other than the Sir Walter John Show, that's when you bless me, L.A. Mass. Man, we've been going going strong for about an hour right now, and we're so excited for this topic today because, you know, we are equal opportunity uh, receiver and giver. <laughs> yes, we are. We're talking about the backstory of the Pastor Corey Brooks and uh, the Governor Rauner, and we talked about Meeks. To kind of help you understand those of you who are not living in Chicago, let you know who they are, where they come from, their struggles, and how they, they well was put out there on the spotlight for us to either enjoy, to like, or to not like. Uh, and uh, we have a wonderful guest who, who walked in, and I'm gonna tell you about him one second here. Uh, on November 6th, as one of the first public acts as governor elect of Illinois, Bruce Rauner announced campaign supporter Pastor Corey Bricks. New Beginnings Church of God in Christ. Again, we talked about him earlier. Church of God in Christ. I'm sorry. I said Church of God in Christ. <laughs> no, he's not Church of God in Christ. He's <laughs> nah, a brother. No, no, no. He's no, a preacher, no. but he's not no, Coach We can't completely lie on him like that. We can't completely lie. No, that's not. I'm about sorry. About I'm, Kurt, I'm Church of God, God in Christ. He's Church of God in Christ, but not Pastor Brooks. No. Uh, and and, uh, and, uh, and he's, doing, he's doing a great job playing, at not being Church of God in Christ. Uh, so um, Crazy, Rev- he can pay us report now, though, can't? Yeah, he can. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Corey Brooks, because he's got some money. <laughs> Pastor Brooks and uh, Reverend Meeks uh, of Salem Baptist Church. Uh, the clergymen are slated to assist him as he prepares to be sworn in. Okay, now this is an old article, so that you can understand. Uh, the article is talking about this is from the Citizen, by the way, that the magazine African American clergymen among Governor Rauner's transitional team. 
Now, uh, many of us supported uh, these two pastors, and some of us did not. All right. Now, I have uh, the pastor Brooks walked in the studio. He is here in the flesh. He don't have to be throwing no emails or texts and the like. He is here, he right speak here. For he speaks for himself. And I have the great Chris. Is your mic on. Pastor Chris Harris yes, is here. My mic is on. Yeah, his mic on. is on. Pastor Chris Harris is on the phone here. I just want to say hello, uh, Pastor Harris. You got me on hold. Are you still there? Hey. Hey, hey, I'm still here. Seven. Okay, okay, all right. He's he's here, so he'll be here right. for the duration of the show as well. Pastor Corey Brooks, uh, I want you to respond to, to some of the things that we might have said uh, right. from either from what you read or, or from uh, Pastor Chris Harris tagging you on Facebook. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, well, first of all, let me say thank you for uh, allowing me to come be on the show. It's it's good that you all are in the neighborhood, so it gives us a chance. Who also uh, people who also live in the neighborhood? You know, some people move out to the suburbs That's and right. they can't, they grow up out of the hood. But I live in the hood, so uh, I'm close by. So I'm glad about that. Uh, let me just say I came down here not to argue or not to fuss because at the end of the day, uh, we are the body of Christ. So Amen. we're going to be a good example. But I do believe that just because we're in the body of Christ does not mean we have to be monolithic in our thinking right. and think all the same way and have the same philosophy and the same ideology. Um, so that's why I'm here, because my philosophy and ideology is different. My political stance is different, and I don't shy away from that. And I defend that, especially when people say things that are incorrect and they have no idea a clue especially brothers who preach the gospel when they talk stuff and they don't know nothing about me and they never met me so i need to defend me i don't need anybody to defend me on facebook twitter mm -hmm. instagram i do that myself and i do it very well first of all uh, I've never received a government grant or any monies from anybody to do anything. Uh, I've been pastoring for over 25 years. I started from the bottom up, and I've worked very hard to get everything that we've gotten accomplished at our church. We've continually helped the community, and that's what we do. The one grant that we ever have received was a grant from the Justice Department to do teen boys uh, to mentor them. Uh, I've never received one dime from Bruce Ronner, never received a dime from Bruce Ronner to, um, to, 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 to back him up in a campaign, never received a grant from any of his friends. The most I've gotten from one donor ever <clears throat> was Tyler Perry and Marty Ozinga, who owns Ozinga Concrete. Right. And I'm very proud of that. I'm a close friend with Marty Ozinga, and I appreciate Marty Ozinga. And I appreciate Tyler Perry, who's who's been very, very good to our ministry and who I knew even before um, the rooftop experience uh, through Bishop Jakes. Let me say that when people say that um, I, I led them astray, what they need to be saying is how the Democratic Party has led them astray. Um, you know, when you look in our neighborhoods, you see blight. You see boarded up houses. You see brothers on the corners with no jobs. You see an educational system that is absolutely failing. You see a dropout rate that is alarmingly high. You see violence at an all-time high. And all of our communities, wherever you go around the country, whether it's New York, Philadelphia, Oakland, all of them are ran by Democrats. All of them are ran by potentially mostly black Democrats at that. And so I have a problem when people say um, they have an issue with me because I decided to leave the Democratic plantation and vote <laughs> and, 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 and vote independently, being a free thinking black man with a political science degree. You know, I'm not just doing stuff off the whim as if I don't know the policies and the stances. I have a political science degree, not just a theological degree, but a political science degree. I've been to law school. I know what I'm doing. I know the policies that I stand for. And I also know the policies that are ruining our community and putting us in danger. And whenever you have a system in place that rewards, rewards ongoing um, slothfulness, you're going to keep that behavior in place. And then what it does is it breeds people with no hope to get to the next level. So, yes, I want to have someone who believes in starting businesses, entrepreneurs. I, I want to have someone who wants to give school choice. I, my child should not have to be regulated or regulated to the, uh, a school just because I live in a certain neighborhood and then that school is underperforming and poor performing. I should not have to make my child go to that school. I should be able to take my taxpayer dollars and have my child follow any school, whether it's a public schools, which I support full hardly public schools or a charter school, which I fully support or a private school, which I fully support. And by the way, all my kids have gone to all three. They've done public schools. They've done private schools. They have not done charter schools, public schools or charter schools. My two oldest children graduated from public schools. So uh, when people say things 
uh, about me that they have no clue what they're talking about. I got to check that. And when people say they don't know what I've done since the rooftop, man, I've been passing for 25 years. I was putting in work before the rooftop experience. I just didn't jump up here and all of a sudden I arrived. I was putting in work. I was doing funerals for gang bangers. I was ministering to gang bangers families. I've been working in Woodlawn from day one. Now, after the uh, rooftop experience, people saying, where is he? What is he doing? I I'll tell you what I'm doing. First of all, I'm the only brother who brought all the state contract agencies into the community to talk about black contractors. You want to talk about what I'm doing? Let's talk about how Democrats only allow black people less than 1% of the contracts in this state. And you would think that if black people vote in Democrats, we would have more than 1% of contracts from around the state. That's billions of dollars that we didn't get the opportunity, but yet we're being loyal to this party and they're not being loyal to us. But every time we consistently vote for them and they give us nothing in return, our neighborhoods are horrible. So what have I been doing? Trying to get African-Americans contracts, trying to get African-Americans jobs. We've had two job fairs. We've had a job fair for those who are recently got out of jail. I've been bringing things to the community consistently, and I'm going to continue to do that. What am I personally doing? We have a charter school at our church where we have for uh, students who are 16 to 21 who are looking for another opportunity. What am I doing? We have a, a house that we're building for teenage boys uh, who, are, who are homeless and don't have parents like Laquan McDonald, who was a, a, a ward of the state. We're building a home for, for, uh, for kids, and we're going to name it the Laquan McDonald House. Matter of fact, that's what I'm doing. So all these people who talk this stuff, you, we need to ask them, what are you doing? What were you doing last night? When the protest was out there, I didn't see none of the, all the black guys and preachers I've been hearing on the radio. I ain't seen none of them out there last night when I was in the streets. I ain't seen none of them out there today. People in people not to throw no, uh, you know, no swing in nobody, but, I, turkey, but, but nobody in this studio. I, don't, I didn't see nobody in this studio. Well, we had a, did, did we did they did we had to be out there last you night? Didn't no, see I, me? I, I didn't see you, bro, at all. Did I, that mean I went? I, I didn't see you out. Were you? Yeah. Where at? Out there. Out well, where? Actually, I was there with Action Now. Where at? <clears throat> I was at the intersection when they had the bus. We got the bus on the south side and came to the west side. I I, I see. Well, I see you. And so I, but my question is, do we have to be out there? Do we have to be out there to, to, to be effective? Yeah, the you protest. should be out there. Really? Yes, you should be well, out here. Every black man If you yeah, every black man should be out there. Been out there last now, night. Listen, every black man who believes that it was an injustice. See, this uh -huh. is this is where the rubber meets the road. It's easy so, for us. Hold on. It's easy for us to talk smack. Yeah, but when it comes to putting our feet on the ground and doing something, it's a whole nother story. Okay. And so I've been putting in major, 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 major work, major work. We just fed. I don't know no church in Chicago. Our church took a tremendous hit um, because I came out and voted for a Republican. And I, I ain't tripping. I ain't crying about that. We took a tremendous hit financially, numerically, our membership. But. And last year we fed 2,500 people. Okay. I didn't say because we took a hit and we got lost membership and lost money, we only going to feed 2,500 people. No, I said, you know what? If Jesus could take two fish and five loaves and feed 5,000, then surely I can take this little bunch of new, uh, new beginnings and we can do the same and replicate it. We fed 5,000 people. I'm talking about 5,000 turkeys, not some little bitty piece of chicken. 12 to 15 pound turkeys from Purdue. Nobody gave us that. Nobody nobody gave us a grant to do that. Man, I got out and hustled and, and my members gave their last to buy for people. We bought everybody a box of food to go with it. So, man, it, it hurts me to my heart when people say things about me. And I live in this community. I live in this hood. I'm with these guys every day. Yeah, I think you're defending uh, your generosity, and I, I'm, not I'm defending my yeah, stance. Yeah, no, that's not no. <clears throat> we we we. I think the focus here is on your political stand. And it's now, not a, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not yeah, your and character. And let's, and it's let's, not let's, let's talk politics. Well, let's yeah. talk politics. Okay, we got to give Johnson the opportunity because really your your attack is a, 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 with this brother here, <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> well, my attack ain't with nobody. Yeah, it is. You just no, look, I, yes, no, you no. did. Yes, you did. I don't have an attack. I said. My attack is not with anybody. My, I said that black brothers 
All right, that's, and I said not in, that mm-hmm. includes us in this studio. Uh-huh. So I'm not I'm not attacking. I'm including, okay. and that means me. That means you. That means him. That means yeah. him. I'm not I'm not disqualifying okay. anybody. I'm, can, you you need to hear from Johnson, and then I want to hear from Pastor Chris Harris because it, there needs yeah, to be a, an equal uh, balance here. What are you going to say now? Yeah, bless you, preacher. Uh-huh. So, um, my economics, my 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 concern. And uh, maybe you in the car when this was happening. I don't know if this is broadcast in the car. But not okay. Repeatedly said about uh, the man in the ministry. Don't know anything about it. I'm sure he's doing a great job. The economics of the state of Illinois, the economics of the black man, the economics of how government works from the federal government. From, you know, we don't create budgets. We uh, we don't create money. Whether we 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 do Correct. budgets. Correct. You know, and uh, we had a dialogue about how uh, government is not necessarily meant to balance itself out as you would do your checkbook. Or a for-profit business, so you uh, as a as a pastor, no, you as a pastor, you got people coming to you all the time. You, you're a resource leader. Can right? I answer that? Yeah, let me, let me, that first let me, part, me, because me, I don't want us to go too far without being able to answer with the first part that's you fair. just said. That's okay. fair. Okay, so the first part you just said that's an ideology. That's a philosophy. I, I get it from the Bible, though. Okay, that's an ideology. Well, if you get it from the Bible, the Bible talks about not being in debt. So let's that's that, so. Let's talk so, about personal debt. We're talking no, about it's talking about debt. Period. It even right. told the children of Israel relieve everybody of the debt after seven years because the Bible speaks of no debt. Right. So 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 but so. It, but, but what it doesn't say is the Bible says, "Oh, no man, anything." That's you, right. the government. That's the business. So, that's anybody. So you take any major country. Today, globally, in any, any p- prosperity country, they always have red tape. They always have uh, some money they're charging off. Uh, Chase, Bank of America, American Express. So you have a IBM. Debt. No, I- I'm saying the for profit uh, versus the non for profit. As we incorporate our church and as we do business as a non for profit, we take the challenge of it says, IRS, we're going to give and we're not going to make a profit. Debt, is not, debt is not good yeah, anytime. Whether, cannot, you're, whether you're for so, profit, well, whether my, you're for profit. I don't have a problem going into debt. Whether you're for profit. For a homeless person. Whether you're for, for profit. Eat, whether you're for profit. a person on the street. Whether you're for profit. Or, I'm going to pay more profit, taxes. Whether you're for profit or non for profit. Debt is never good. As a matter of fact, if we had less debt. When I die, I'm going to have had, debt. If we had now, I don't plan to have debt. <laughs> well, it's the you, reality you, of it. You might now, have debt. Well, listen, but I know a whole lot policy. of bug, I know a whole lot of believers like Chris Harris and I, who we ain't trying to have debt. Well, I ain't trying to leave the, my the, kids in bondage, the, 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 I, which I, is I, what I, which is what Democrats do consistently. I'm not with saying debt that you can't pay off. I'm leaving, saying be leaving a generations forever. in bondage, and what happens when you have debt and build up debt? You create an infrastructure where you cannot take care of people. When well, you have debt, so, you can't so, invest in schools. So let's when you have debt, you can't invest in police. Hold on. When you have debt, you can't invest in schools. When you have debt, you can't invest in the police department. When you have debt, you can't invest in an infrastructure that helps young African-American males get off the street and get jobs. Debt at any time is never good for any society and any people. It only compounds the situation. We don't want debt. And when you don't have debt, it allows you more money, more capital to do for the less fortunate, to do for those who need a safety net. I believe in feeding the hungry. I believe in visiting the prisons. I believe in taking care of the sick. That is the philosophy of the gospel. You can't be a gospel preacher, I believe, and not believe that. But I also believe that you need to use your resources wisely and not put them in debt. You need to use your resources to take care of people. That's what I believe. And so you got to eliminate the debt, balance your budget so you can do for people. So, so, so eventually we'll get to this word GDP, gross you know what GDP I know exactly what it's so, gross so, national so, product. So where we were in 1980, where we were in 85, where we were in 90, where we were in 95, I'm jumping around to all the way through the Republican administrations to Democrat administrations. And I said earlier, what's the difference between a Democrat and a Republican? Uh, at times, there are no differences because at times in politics, they're all politicians. I say ten dollars. So you know, and at times they're all politicians. The difference is about ten dollars. It's about ten dollars. Yeah, now, 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 I see the difference as a person who's going to uh, not just balance the book, as the pastor said, but and be a good steward of your money, but to cut back where a person who could benefit from something cannot benefit. It's not the person who's able to work and do these things and you know he's a lag on society but but the person you know in your church and in my church who will never be anything because they're 
seniors, they're disabled, they're, they have issues, they have wards of the state, and they need help. I and agree. If, and, if, and if I'm going to cut the budget because you don't want me to have a right-to-work state and you don't want me to unionize, you ain't the person who should be leading me because government or welfare for the for the human being is the welfare of person. Welfare in that short 1972. Right. What's the movie name? Can I uh, answer that? Uh, oh, we Claudine? Talk- can Claudine. I, can not, I, not, yeah. not that welfare, but the welfare that? of the betterness for man. Can I answer that? Yes, sir. Yeah, answer okay. that and then we'll get okay. past Chris Harris. Let's, right use, let's use our churches for an example. <laughs> Both of us agree that we should take care of the poor and the less fortunate. All right. right? We, we do. Both, we both agree. Right. Now, if your church is in debt, how can you take care of the poor and the less fortunate? Can you take care of them better if you're in debt, or can you take care of them better if you're out of debt? You when you when that? you're trying to figure out how to pay your mortgage, I'm talking about you, Pastor. When you're trying to figure out, do I pay my church's mortgage or do I feed the hungry? You become complicated by the debt. But if you oh, eliminate, I agree right, with you. That's me. That's you. That's anybody. You can't live if you exactly. don't have any money. So if we remove the debt. It gives us more wherewithal, more financial substance to take care of the less fortunate. I believe in taking care of the less fortunate. I believe the church, I believe the government, we ought to do more to take care of the less fortunate. But you cannot do that until you start eliminating the debt. And what has happened. At the cost of what? And what has happened in Illinois. At the cost of what? I'm going to answer. And what has happened in Illinois, they've they've had so much debt that is a train wreck getting ready to happen. And so what happens is you got a short term fix the problem so that long term you can take care of the less fortunate and create a safety net to help to help take care of more people long term because if you don't you know not only will you hurt people short term but you will hurt people long term so my mother the or grandmother long term. so I my so my grandmother who needs the help and the assistance the next generation is going to miss out as well if it, the problem is not rectified. Somewhere along the way, somebody, as hard as it is, and I hate it. I hate that you got to do Who's it. Who's the somebody? The, the governor. The governor oh, no, no, and the legislative the body. People. The governor oh, and the okay. legislative body from a political standpoint. Okay. The governor and the legislative body, the people that we voted in place, they have to make a tough decision. Do we stay down this road and run, and run this train straight into this brick wall and crash and file bankruptcy like Detroit? Mm-hmm. So, or do we fix this problem? Right. They, so they, I, I have more of an economic question because this is an economic problem. Okay. And we were talking about guys uh, staying in the lane or being in their profession. You know, you're okay. an engineer, you're a doctor, you're a right. lawyer, whatever. So on the economics of it, I wonder how many human beings wouldn't mind paying $10 more a year in taxes to make sure that someone got fed or a daycare didn't close in Ina Ana, Illinois, versus uh, Maywood, Illinois. It, it is. It is not the balance of the budget. It is yeah, how can I you answer that? is how you go about. Can you let Chris Harris yeah, answer he's that? He's on Facebook like it's my yeah. turn. Right. <laughs> All right, Reverend Harris. No, okay. man, we ain't let Chris Harris yeah, go. Yeah. He, he is. He is always taking his orders from the mayor. <laughs> 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 mm. He does whatever the mayor says. Whatever the mayor tells him to do, that's what he do. Go Down ahead, in Doc, Brownsville. You, you are, I, actually, I actually wish I was getting money from the mayor and everybody else. But we got to do what we got to do. I, I thank God for all you brothers and having this um, very, very necessary conversation. Uh, it, frankly speaking, it sounds like it's all over the place, but at the end of the day, um, I'm really, really more so focused on and concerned about uh, talking about the fact that, you know, pastors felt like, according to you, um, Heather Jones, he felt like, um, you know, Pastor Brooke and maybe others uh, speak on his behalf. And, mm-hmm. you know, personally, I, I don't think anybody speaks on anybody's behalf. I think, you know, everybody has a voice and it should be used. And I think, you know, a lot of times when preachers make comments such as almost uh, the way politicians do, preachers are stay in the pulpit and not focus on political things and things like that. You know, I'm so glad that Dr. Martin Luther King didn't feel that way. Uh, I'm so glad that he didn't stay quiet. We probably wouldn't be able to vote. We probably wouldn't be able to uh, have all of the wonderful privileges that we have uh, in the African-American community. As a matter of fact, none of us would be where we are right now were it not for preachers who actually got involved in civic, you know, uh, situations. Now, let me also add that, you know, a lot of times what I have found, and I'm not saying that this is the case, you know, of Pastor Johnson and others, but 
I have found that when a lot of pastors are not heard, uh, they get angry uh, that they, matter of fact, when a lot of pastors don't have a mic, they get angry that they're not being heard. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, you can't have a voice and you're not visible. You know, what I would challenge Pastor Johnson and everybody else is to show up. You can't speak up until you show up. Where are you when we are out here in the streets? Where are you when these people are dying on a constant basis? Oh, no, Where I'm in my you? community. Let me finish. Uh, let me finish. My hold friend. On. Hold on. We're, 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 we're there constantly. We're, we're yeah. different. Every, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me finish. Oh, okay. Where are you? Because at the end of the day, I don't see you ever. And I've been doing this work for a long time. That doesn't we, mean that we, you're not doing it. We live in but different I communities. In the rooms. Let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. I am saying, in the rooms that I'm in, at the tables that we sit in, we don't see you there. Now, the better way of being heard is not getting angry about who's getting listened to, but why don't you reach out to us and ask us, how do I get to the table? How do I get in the room? Because I think we'd love to have your voice at the table saying these very things. Last night, I'll end the plane with this. I personally don't feel that Reverend Jackson or Al Sharpton speak for me. However, I am extremely glad that they do, at times, speak for and have a history of speaking for the African-American community. I think a lot of times, even though I don't agree with everything that Al Sharpton or Reverend Jackson says, here's the bottom line. Some of those guys are heard at a national level that none of us ever will be. Right. And I don't think we will appreciate them until they are gone. I agree with that. No, that's that's that sound. And and that's the thing we were trying to do, uh, Pastor Brooks, uh, um, is sh show a man, uh, celebrate a man when he does good. And I think there are some decisions that all of us have made that not that has not been uh, popular decisions. Oh, so absolutely. If it, okay, hasn't been popular. I, and on my show, I'm on this show every day from of two hours, and I talk about my my struggle. Yes. Okay, and the things that happened to me, but then. When uh, I found out that my testimony comes comes loud and clear to a lot of people because they'll call me or they'll hit me in the inbox and say, thank you for that because right. my brother's going through that or I went through that on and on. So I think the people out uh, on Facebook, if they're going crazy here, they, they I think the main question to you right. is uh, your support of, of Governor Rauner and you, like I said earlier on the show, we don't always know what a man is going to do once we support him. We don't know. But I liked what you said earlier about uh, us all uh, putting our coins into one political party, the Democratic Party. We all jumped over there in 1964 with, with uh, LBJ, okay, and the, the bill he signed with yes, the, civil the, war, the Civil Rights Bill, okay. We all jumped over there. And then what happened was it looks like this, that that party has supported us, but many of us African Americans, we don't read, first of all. And we hardly watch the news. And then when we do watch the news, some of that, we'll see Pastor Corey Brooks and on Fox News on the mic and say, look at him, he's a traitor. And we don't we have no idea of his backstory. We don't know what he come through. He just I'm glad he we got tape here. Okay? It's gonna go across the world. We got tape of his backstory. We only see him on the rooftop and then we see him on Fox News and then we see him sitting next to Rounder. We don't we don't we don't know all the stuff he did prior to that. So this is important, okay? But now the people are upset with you and right. I think I think the problem is we might be upset with the wrong person because it rattles the governor now, and they shouldn't be upset with him because let me tell you, yeah, him for his yeah, election. They can't evade. They, right. they, can't, they, they can't have to vote for themselves. Right. Absolutely. Sure. They can't, now what they can say is they didn't agree with his choice. Right. Sure. Now, now, can I add one more thing? Oh, 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 yes, sir. Yeah. Can, can I add just one more thing? Uh -huh. Every one of us that have voted for anybody have absolutely voted for a person who didn't do everything they said they were right. going to do. Right. All of us. Whether it be Republican, Independent, or even Democrat. At the end of the day, some things President Obama said he was going to do, he has not done. Most of those things he has, but not all of them. Hillary Clinton, she's, everybody says she's going to be the next person. Whatever she's saying she's going to do, it doesn't make necessarily mean that she's actually going to come through with those things. Everybody has ideas until they get into the seat mm -hmm. and they got to face the other powers that be. So if we're going to hold Pastor Brooks accountable for who he supported, whether they were a Republican or not, then 
then we got to hold ourselves more accountable for all the Democrats that have been in there for a long time and have not done anything right. that they said that they were going to do. You're right. That that's true. And you're an independent yeah. now, yeah. right, Pastor, Pastor Brooks? Because I saw I heard you say that on. No, the, I'm a Republican. Okay, Republican. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I've, I've, I've decided. I've decided. I've decided to be conservative. Yeah, I, I decided to be. <laughs> I decided to be conservative. I, I, I don't say I'm a Republican. I, I, I say I'm a, I'm a compassionate conservative. I'm a conservative. I agree and, with and that. And one of the things yeah, that one of the things moderate. that bothers me, yeah, me too, is that we have so many brothers. I'm and I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a probably shift this, but I want to say something about what you just said about uh, Governor Ronner, and that is that you can't be mad. I think not at me or the governor. Mm. You have to be mad at how did we get in this position. Right. And how we got in this position is being our people are being controlled by one other white man mm -hmm. that that we never talk about. And that's Madigan. Right. He controlled the whole thing. And, and for 30 years, he's controlled it. And for 30 years, we've been led to the slaughter. And no one has said a word because they didn't have enough power to say a word. Right. So you bring Ronner, who is a billionaire, and this is my philosophy. I said, who is able to stand against that power but someone else who is more powerful? Mm -hmm. That's one. And then two, you have to have someone who says, you know what, I'm going to correct this problem. So we, I, 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 I went to the law offices of um, the, the, the law offices that handled the Detroit bankruptcy before I made my decision to support Ronner because I wanted to know how did Detroit end up in bankruptcy. And Detroit ended up in the bankruptcy – the same way Illinois was going down the drain, they could not afford the system that was in place. So we got to get mad at the infrastructure and the system that is already in place, and we have to put people in place to change that system. And that sometimes hurts. Sure. In order to get diamonds, there got to be some cuts. Sure. And so I believe that if Governor Ronner does not produce after four years, mm -hmm. then he'll get what everybody else got. Cut. Remove, <laughs> cut, right. And I'll be the loudest one saying, yeah. man, he got to go. Okay. He promised he was going to fix this situation. He okay. did not fix it. But if my people are not in a better position four years from now mm -hmm. than they are right after uh, after all these years of mm -hmm. Democratic rule, I'll be, man, I will be the loudest one cheering. Yeah. And I'll, I'll close with this. The man only been in office 10 months. 10 months, yeah. So you asking mm -hmm. him to do in 10 months – what the Democrats been doing for ten years? Wait, yeah, come can, on, man! Yeah, that is can, that is can, so can that reply. is so that is so unfair. You can't fix a problem. We didn't do our here it is. We didn't do our black president like that. Remember the when the Republicans? Remember when the Republicans <laughs> was doing, hold on? They remember were doing remember, a remember when the Republicans? Remember when they said the Republicans were attacking the president in the first term, the first two years? Right. It's his fault. This system is shot. You were going bankrupt. The, all the companies were going belly up. They were blaming him and. People like us said, "Hey, it's unfair. That's you got to, yeah, you got to <laughs> blame Bush. We blame Bush, sure. and give the president an opportunity to fix it. Yeah, that's what we said. Right. So now, because it's somebody who's a different party than us yeah, and a different right. color than us, yeah. we want to change what we've been saying. Yeah. Come on, man, that's yeah. that's yeah. baloney. Yeah. 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 Hold on, okay. now we, but we, he, he, he Illinois has had three. Wait a minute, we've only had. But I personally do not think that Governor Rana has any intentions on helping poor black people. Me either. In a real way. I think not just him, but I got so a question for Chris Harris. Officials Pastor Harris who question. Are not just, who are not just black. I got a question I for you. Are, I mean who are not just you know, not just white. Hey. I think they're black public officials. Pastor who Harris have no I got a question on really helping the um, poor African Americans. Because here's the bottom line. Many of them who are black who have been there for a long time, if they haven't done it yet, then... I got man, one I question. Do, here's the bottom line. It's it, 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 best said this way. Vision is foresight with insight based on hindsight. So if, I, if my vision <laughs> Boy, is... Boy, you sound baptist now. Somebody going to give them all I'm looking at what they did in the past. Question then. <laughs> Pastor Harris, I got a question. Um, with that being said... What does help look like? Because mm -hmm. I think that's what we need to, 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 to define. Because what I believe help looks like to the black community, 
ideology, with my ideology and philosophy, it may be totally different than how another person may seem it uh, to be. So I'm interested when people say they're not going to help us. What what does that help look like? Mm. Well, I think I think investment yeah, yeah. investment. <laughs> Yeah. And you said investment. You think sure that yeah, no, no, I, I'm no. giving my answer. Yeah, you don't think you don't think you don't think yeah. you don't think investments are going to be made in the black community? Yeah. Listen. Uh, Go ahead, Doc Johnson. Listen. Uh, uh, I, I, let, me finish, I, let me finish. I think investment in the African American community. <laughs> I think putting uh, black leadership in real leadership positions where they can really affect change, and and not just a black person for the sake of finding somebody black who will agree with you. So that you can look like you are including the African American community and diverse. I think not only investment, but making sure that they break the broken system so they can fix it when it comes to education. Okay. Because here's the bottom line: if they don't fix the schools, right? Uh, if if Ronald really, and if the legislators really wanted to help African Americans and poor people and and fix. The system, then guess what? They will put a whole lot of focus. Matter of fact, all of them will put less focus on their personal pensions and make sure that they focus on redirecting that money to investing in the community. Now, you do, know, do, you do know, you do know, they're going to get paid crazy kind of money and for the you, rest you do of their know, lives just because they held office for a short right. time. Now, so you, do know, you, do know, you do know, you do know, you do know that, and I'm going to take what you just said, that. And not to defend Governor Ronald, because I don't like, I, I really don't like trying to defend him because I feel like he's a grown man. He can speak for himself. And I hate when people try to speak for me. But I will say this, that what you just said is true. People ought to put up or shut up. And you, you, you're you talking about a man who invested over $25 million into Morehouse College. You're talking about a man who invests in schools in poor areas in black communities. His wife is totally devoted. That's what they do. So, so. I, when people say, you know, he don't care nothing about black people, I'm thinking, I, I got another. I, if I had 25 million, even if I'm a billionaire, I, I, I got another. I got another way I could spend 25 <laughs> right. million dollars. That's, 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 that's I got another way. I got other ways. Well, if you look at a person's that's, that's philanthropy, if governor. you look at a person's philanthropy, it helps you to decide what they think, what they believe, how they feel about certain things. That's how you decide on the person. And so if his wife and their dedication toward impoverished schools and impoverished areas, I have to believe that they're going to try to make schools better. Now, I will say this, and I'll say it again. I promise the black community, if he does not do what he's supposed to do, after four years, I'll be the loudest one. I would have to be yeah. because I feel betrayed, and, and and because you promised you were gonna make things better for African Americans. Sure. And Let so me, I uh, try to press the issue, yeah. and and I'm gonna continue to do now that. I'll but if he this. doesn't come through, yeah. I'm gonna be oh, loud. Yeah. I say this all the time. You've heard yeah. me say it many times. When you do good, people don't remember, and when right. you do bad, people don't forget. So I will say that I salute what you have done, even taking the having the courage to go outside of the lines right. within Chicago being that, a Democrat that city. That took nerves. However, yeah. Ryan, I mean, uh, Rauner is not new in the sense of Republican government. Right. I mean, prior to uh, the person you defeated, oh, I'm having a dumb attack now. Uh, oh, the, the, the prior governor? Quinn. Yes. Uh, Quinn. Quinn. Prior Patrick to Pat Quinn. Quinn, which was a mistake from the onset. Sure. There was three Republican, successive Republican governors. Sure. To say that Madigan, you had, had Blanco. He, he was. You, you, he was well, okay, Blanco. Okay, I forget. Uh, but, but still, prior to that, you had Thompson, you had Edgar, and you had Ryan. Sure. I mean, Republican, all Republican. Uh, yes, Mike Madigan had been in office a long time, but it's not like it has always been. Uh, okay, Chicago, and then the rest of Illinois. They they played games together. Like I said, the difference between a Republican and a Democrat is about ten dollars. And I mean, I stole that from Malcolm X, and it it made perfect sense to me. So to say that party lines don't cross, and that to say that the Democratic Party has done this to us, I, I, I mean, I'll say that. So let me I'll you say one this. Thing. Hold on, wait, hold on, okay. let me finish because right. I was I patiently listen. Yeah. I'll say that we allowed all of them. Mm-hmm. To do things to us. That's true. I agree with that. I say yeah. we have allowed all of them to do mm-hmm. things to us, and we have not gone out and challenged them with our vote. That's the biggest issue. Because I'll agree. tell you this, and you all may want to uh, get angry with me. I didn't even vote for our president when he ran for state governor. 
No. I mean, stay centered. Right. Absolutely. Me, because yeah. I believed Alan Keyes was the better candidate. I did too. Well, and let, I voted yes, sir, Johnson. Against, let, let, go ahead, Johnson, let, real quick. Let me jump in. Uh-huh. The, uh, so you voted for the thing. conservative Alan Keyes. Yes. Yeah, the conservative man. I'm, yes. I'm, because I'm, I'm a moderate. conservative. I'm, I'm, conservative, moderate. Moderate. I'm, I'm conservative. I'm a conservative yes. moderate. I've always well, been. Well, me too. Let, let, me, uh-huh. let me say this. Uh, not to backtrack, but I got gray hair the hard way. I earned it. Sure. And sitting. And you lost some, too. Yeah, lost some. So, you know, the greater respect I have for Pastor Brooks is not. Not because he's in the studio, but mm-hmm. because somebody's given me an education that I did not know, and uh, I respect uh, what he's done uh, in his in the community. Now I won't say his community because someone mm-hmm. says I'm not out there, sure. but I'm actually dealing with gangs every other day sure. in my community. And your community, they, mine. TV don't show up. No, that but, was uh, they, the show know, they don't show up in the south suburbs. Thank, thank you for they saying don't. that. Yeah, but. Uh, you know, I, I honor and respect him for what he's done. But I want to get to the economics of the thing. So, all right, so we, we're past my uh, rant of what I thought about the pastor and the pastor showed up. Okay, great. He's a man. I'm a man. God bless him. I respect him. At this point, we're dealing with the governor and his economics and how he tends to do business. So he made a critical point that I do not disagree with. You've got a guy named Mike Manigan that's been there as long as the wall's been there, and he's controlling whatever he needs to control. Just because I have a blank, blank, blank who's got the biggest gun on the block don't mean I go cut off everybody's head until he says, have mercy. That's what's happening. That's my problem. Sure. So it's not that he's a Republican. We all have a father figure on, on uh, here at the table sure. um, that we have all gone to for our family's time of need right. called death. Uh, Spencer Lee. We all love Spencer Lee. Right. We respect him. He's Who is a, a Republican? Uh, yeah. yeah. And guess what? Well, he is now. Yeah. I, I call. <laughs> Y'all, we, we go oh, to no, him no. every single day. Yeah, yeah, but see, you know, he he didn't do what you did, preacher. But uh, oh, he supported <laughs> Ronner. He did. No, yeah, no, no. He I'm saying. Ronner. But you know, listen. My point is this. My point is the economics of things. We don't we don't make money in Illinois. We don't print money in Illinois. We only receive money from the federal government. If you want to go back in history, you can talk about. Uh, the just GDP. I know we skipped over it and we didn't really deal with it and we didn't talk about how America balances its budget. It would never balance its budget. Government at that level is meant to build roads, build high schools, mm-hmm. take care of Social Security. They don't want the budget. It, 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 so no. it, it, it's not that issue. And if we deal with, uh, you say you didn't vote for, uh, you voted for Keys. Yes, I did. I voted for Hillary Clinton. And, yeah. you know, I got talked about, man, you ain't going to vote for the brother. I think, I think she's a better politician. Sure. Now, did I vote for him in the, in the general? Sure. She may be, but I voted for her. Right. Uh, <laughs> I just want to go on record. <laughs> record. Wow. Oh, you don't recognize. <laughs> now, when it came to the general election, yeah. I voted for the president, and I sure. voted again. And I didn't. I didn't vote for uh, uh, so, I voted for listen, Huckabee, and I've been, I've been repenting. I was a Huckabee. I just wanted to be said. I just wanted to be said. I hope y'all attack them as much as y'all have attacked me. Every one of them said they did not vote for the president. I did. No, 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 no. I said when he ran for state senator. Oh, I said when he ran for state senator. You I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. He I'm ran sorry. for U.S. Senator. Alan Keyes and him ran for U.S. Senator. I did not vote for the President so, Barack listen, Obama. I'm sorry. I, 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 and I, in the I, primary, I, I didn't need it. I'm going to yeah, yeah, bring up a critical point. Hold, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. No, you ain't no, got to no, get no, off the no, line. No, no. Stay there. You called me. Stay there. You ain't getting off the line. Pastor, Pastor Brooks, I got a question for you. I want to tell you, are we doing the Laquan McDonald? Uh, memorial okay. uh, issue over at uh, Plain Chapel tonight at 6 o'clock. And I just want to encourage all of you guys to, you know, if you're not already involved, make sure you get involved. Uh, make sure that, you know, Chicago hears your voice because we need your voice and your partnership. Uh, Pastor, uh, don't worry. Uh, you'll be able to stop hating on Brooks today because uh, <laughs> I'm going to make sure you get at the table. Good. <laughs> Hold on, my, my but, uh, Give us that address. Thing is, brother, Carter. Carter, man, hey. I can't wait to see you at the next event for the community. Uh, I'm, I'm at an event every brother, day. Brother, brother, I am brother, a brother, public school teacher <laughs> in the hood. Hey, Dr. Harris, Harris. <laughs> bless you. Uh, uh, yeah, y'all listen, get the glory. Listen, I'm listen. in the story. I can't stand it when y'all sit there and get on the camera and pontificate and let the media glorify you when I am in the classroom every day dealing with other people's kids trying to other teach them problems. and raise them and they send them there and then you get the politicians who come here and come up with these initiatives and all of this crap that don't make schools better from charter schools on out ain't nobody trying to build a better education they just trying to transfer wealth brother i'm Listen, in the fight and, and you know what i'm gonna I'm nominate <laughs> and with that said governor. yeah with that said how do you 
But I, how pa- would you pastor, fix the schools? But pastor, I want to get back to put real thing. educators in oh. charge and not politicians. Preacher, preacher, hold on. I need to get back to a point. Okay. I need to get back to the numbers game. And, and again, it, it's uh, pull my pull it, engineer. Let's 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 engineer. deal with the numbers. So my question is: You says Governor Romney has a big heart. My question that is, is not what I said. Okay, well, okay, you imply because he gives to. No, okay, we have to be I was, careful okay. not to imply I was making, a, I was making a point of he was saying that he did not care about black people, and I was making a point to say I don't know if I can believe that because he makes investments in. So my question is, you that's clear, what I said. Yeah. You, thank you for the clarity. My question is, what is bigger, his his investments or his super PAC? Uh, I, 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 would say, I would say, pack, I would say, and I would say this. Seventy-eight million dollars, and I would say this. I would say this. Seventy-eight million. I would say this. Knowing and economics, I would say this. I would hope that his investments are bigger than his super PAC because if not, he's an idiot. Seventy-eight. <laughs> so, so he's, he's he's flooding commercials. He's doing this. He's doing the that. great coin so, breaks, everybody. Yeah, I would hope that his I would hope that his investments would be far greater than his super pack because you that what? would make him a financial fool. <laughs> Absolutely. And I don't believe that he's a financial fool. No. He's already showed that he's a a genius when oh, it yeah. comes to economics. Wait, 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 so, wait, wait, so his wait, super pack is made up of not just his resources, but his super pack is made up of other people's resources as. well. Well, and there's nothing wrong with having OPP, a super PAC. Huh? Matter of fact, I wish that black people would come together and make a super PAC for the issues that we're oh concerned about and start saying, look, Ooh. we're not going to vote for people who don't put jobs in our neighborhood. Thank you, you know, when we hear politicians, now, I heard a politician. I'm not going to say his name. Pull my piano. I heard a politician because it'll cause too much <laughs> of an issue. I heard a politician say, if certain things happen, I'm not going to put jobs. Don't come to me for jobs. Yeah, and I, I thought, that. what insensitive and what yeah. that what, was a power. That, that was that, control. That, yeah. yeah, and for and for yeah. us to already be in a starving predicament, and you tell us that, I wish, regardless of how we feel about each other, and I know some people are upset with me, and I can live with that because at the end of the day, when I die and take my last breath. I really only have to stand before one person, and I really want to hear the Lord tell me, well done, good and faithful servant. And I don't think he's going to be concerned about if I voted Democrat or Republican or for Bruce Ronner or Quinn. I, I, want to, I want to serve God to the fullest. That's really what my life is really all about. This politics stuff, man, I, could, I, 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 I do that because I want to help people. That's my motive. But my ultimate goal is really to please God and to see people saved, set free, and delivered. That's what I want to do. But but we've got to understand, I wish that we would come together as a people and start saying, look, regardless of who, if you're a Republican or independent or a Democrat, here are the issues that we're concerned about. One, jobs. Mm-hmm. If you don't help us have more jobs to create an economic base in our community so that we can hire our young black brothers, we are not going to vote for you. And if we vote for you and you betray us, we're going to put you out, and we're going to use our money yes, sir. to do that. And mm-hmm. here's the thing about us as a people. We talk so much smack, right? but I don't see us putting together no super PACs. Yeah, that's we good. Talk, and then we talk about the people who have the super PACs. That's good. It's, not, it's not wrong that Bruce Reiner has a $78 million if that's how much it is. I don't know. It's not wrong that he has that. Right. That's wisdom that he has enough sense to put together a pack to get his points of views across. Mm-hmm. And we as a people, we need to have that same wisdom to put to pool our resources together to get our points across, our principles across, because we don't do it. And that's my whole argument. That's why we're in this predicament. Mm-hmm. Our people are starving. Our schools are horrible. Our neighborhoods are jacked. And our children are dying. Mm-hmm. And here we are. Not working together because somebody voted for a Republican. Sure. Come on. That is so crazy and insane. We've got to figure out a way how we can have differences differences of opinion. There's 80% of the things that we agree on. Let's forget the 20%. And it's almost like churches and pastors, like Church of God in Christ, Baptist, Methodist. 80% of the stuff we agree on. We agree on the blood. Right. We agree on Jesus Christ. Yeah. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. But then there's another 20% that we may not agree on, like gay marriage, right. like uh, 
there's other another twenty percent that we may not agree on. Let's leave that alone and let's talk about this eighty percent that we can work together on. That is the problem with sure. our people. Sure, I agree with so, that. So uh, the question. So now we're all ministry, and and this is uh, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Yes, sir. And and we all have families or churches that are doing programs and doing things and having functions, and but we still have the people who are getting a reduction of of life. How do we get the governor to stop worrying about trying to make this a right to work state and uh, the speaker? Okay, so you asked me, so let me is, say. Let me finish the question. Okay, so we 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 have still the essential needs that are not being met. You and I are comfortable. We're, we're hold on, Pastor. We're comfortable in our clothes. We're comfortable in our state of mind. We're comfortable because God has blessed us. Amen. But there are people who are uncomfortable because the situation is what it is. And one guy's worried about uh, uh, unions, and the other guy may be worried about money. But but the guy who's worried about unions is stopping the guy who would give the other guy some help. No, incorrect. Mm-hmm. Let me let me, so since you asked me, let me answer and answer that in two minutes because we're going off. All the right, air. I'm gonna answer it and give it to you. Here it mm-hmm. is. You said let's talk ministry, and at the end of the day, that's really it's really all about ministry. It's about the church. It's about us taking our rightful place in the earth as the body of Christ, regardless of what government does. It's the church that has not stood up. We are so impotent and weak and pitiful that we have not stood up as pastors. We have not stood up as believers and took our rightful place and worked together to take care of the poor. There are enough churches and enough believers and enough kingdom minded people that if we came together, we could take care of all of the poor in Chicago. But you know what? We never will because we let our little petty differences keep us from one another and we never do uh, feel the impact and the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to eradicate poverty and to change lives because we have these little stupid idiot idiosyncrasies and petty differences that keep us from being who Jesus Christ made us to be. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell, the government or whoever, they will not prevail against us, but they are prevailing against us because the church won't be the church. We are the only entity that Jesus Christ left in the earth. He didn't leave the salvation army he didn't leave the ymca he didn't leave the government he left the church so it's the church's responsibility that's the difference not the government's responsibility to take care of people that's what i believe it's the church's full responsibility and we don't do it sure. well listen pastor i agree with you a trillion percent but i'm gonna i'm gonna need you to kindly uh ask this governor to instead of giving him four years let's try two years let's try 16 months okay. because well, i can't afford to uh, yeah. wait that long <laughs> the people will will make that decision you should uh, tell him yeah oh yeah. i have yeah yeah, he, oh, yeah. You i should have tell him. You, you, i have you got this man right here he, he got the number he, got he the may number. have his own number yeah, but call i've emailed him, him before call him. pastor brooks one minute give us a one minute prayer over over the city of chicago i would glad, be glad to do that yeah. first of all lord we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy i thank you uh, for the brothers in this room, I thank you for their thoughts, their opinions. And at the end of the day, uh, one thing is clear, and that is that we all love you, regardless of our political beliefs, regardless of our ideology and our philosophies. Yes, uh, we we are crazy about you. Yes, we Lord, love yes, you. We believe in the power of the blood. Thank we believe you, in the power of prayer. And so, therefore, we're yes, calling on you. We don't look to the governor. We don't look to the mayor. We don't even look to the president because yes, you said you hold all of them. Their hearts are in your hand, and you turn it wherever you want. It to go. So God, we call upon you. We call upon the power of the Holy Spirit to eradicate poverty in our neighborhood, to eradicate the spirit and the demonic oppression of violence. Lord, we call upon you to do something for us that we cannot even do for ourselves. We need you, God, like never, ever before. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you your spirit, your anointing would fall fresh, destroy every yoke, destroy every bondage, set us free. We love you and we thank you. I pray for these brothers' families. Families. Mm-hmm. I yes, pray that their yes, Thanksgiving will be filled and anointed. I pray that every church that's standing open in your name will be blessed. And we pray for Laquan McDonald's family as well Hallelujah. and the city of Chicago yeah. and the state of Illinois. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 The, the great Pastor Corey Brooks. I want to take a picture with you, Doc, after right in, in one minute. Uh, new Beginning Church of God in Christ. 60, He's not Kojic, man. He's not church of God I'm sorry. Christ. New Beginning be Church bishop. of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I sorry, would yeah. be his bishop. NBCChicago.tv. I'm not bad. Yeah, that would make Johnson my bishop, man. That would make him. Right. That would not work. You, you know, I'm going to get kicked out. Bishop. They I would, make, they would make him a bishop. They would. Yeah. I don't want to be under the bondage and oppression of a bishop. But your check. 
checkbook would be kind of weak, though, because <laughs> New Beginning Church of Chicago. See, when I'm reading my script, I see Koji right in front of it. Uh, 66. He right up the street, y'all. Right up the street. That's why he got his so 620 South King Drive. He's right up the street, y'all. Just a beautiful Wood line. Church. Holler Man. if you hear me. All right, y'all. And y'all hear some of my music on the show. I recorded it in his studio. This is a good brother here. Absolutely. He gave me a great rate, by the way, too. Uh, we're going to Quinn Chapel free, tonight. Free, right? Uh, uh, well, we'll talk about that Close after the show. Close free. <laughs> 2407 South Wabash. That's Quinn Chapel, y'all. Meet us, uh, Chris Harris, and a whole bunch of us down there uh, for a uh, night of um, Johnson, coming you going to be there? Johnson. I'm going to be there. Like, like yeah, then we're going to be out on the streets right tonight. We're going to be on the streets tonight. We're going to be on the streets tonight. We're going to be out there all night. <laughs> listen, but you got to understand something. I'll hold down the South Suburbs. Yes, sir. Hold need it to down. Come out there, to there you Harvey. go. There you go. South Highland and the feel you. I feel you. Come on back, Pastor Brooks. Come on back. We covered. Sit down and talk about whatever you got going on, man. Come on back. Uh, Thank Pat, you, I appreciate it. Pat Johnson, Listen. come on back, man. Next week, yes, let's sir. talk about some good stuff, man. Some good stuff. All right. Bless, love you. Bless these uh, brothers. Uh, 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 what's your name? Alvin T. Carter? What? Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> love you, guys. One and only Alvin Carter. <laughs> Go to Spreaker.com and share this show uh, all over the world. So I'm Joe Show. Hey, ladies and gents, if you missed any of today's show, head to Spreaker.com and search The Sir Walter Jones Show and listen to this show and past shows. Now, remember, search for The Sir Walter Jones Show on Spreaker.com. That's Spreaker spelled S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And enjoy. You have been listening to The Sir Walter Jones Show where Sir Walter Jones provides you with a biblical perspective on everyday life. Stay connected to Sir Walter Jones at his website, www.sirwalterjones.com. Search The Sir Walter Jones Show on Facebook or follow on Twitter at Sir Walter's Music. Until next time, thank you for listening to The Sir Walter Jones Show with Sir Walter Jones. Right, Mr. Walters? Mm.